What Eddie Bravo's done. Did you see the Eddie Bravo Invitational, which was number six, was yesterday? It's amazing. What Eddie's done is he's figured out a way to, they have, it's submission only, so they go after it, right? But it, when it reaches a time limit, if it reaches a time limit and there's no submission, then what they do is they start off in compromised positions, sort of like wrestling. You know, in wrestling, one yeah. guy would start down, one like guy would start up. Like the referee's position. Yes. Yeah. It's jujitsu for people who don't know. It's so fucking technical. There's so many techniques. I mean, it's, it's truly amazing when you stop and consider the positions, the amount of different, it's hard to kind of understand it. And I know that's one of the things that I, I, I take a lot of time on when it comes to uh, a ground battle in the UFC. I think Eddie's come up with a perfect solution with this format because it ensures that you're gonna have exciting situations. First time I saw Loki, he was purple belt and he was competing on the Australian ADCC trials. It was in 2010, back in 2010 in Box Hill. There was a competition, a very small competition actually. Uh, uh, funny because I came from Brazil, that you had to do like five, six fights to to qualify, qualify for ADCC and then I came to Australia, we had 33 people in the whole trial. It was a little bit shocking for me, but this day I could see um, two guys, they were um, getting my attention, was, was Jason Coffey, uh, who got second place uh, on the day, and another one was Lucky, Lachlan Giles, who got second place as well, um, and I think he did a great great competition this day and then I start to follow him like you get someone like Lachlan huh? he fights in the equal level with a lot of high level fighters in the world because he he lives for jiu-jitsu he trains for jiu-jitsu he trains uh, pretty much full time and he's he has the tools for for win you know he's gonna be surprising a lot of people uh, I believe I believe in I believe in you Lucky. Go there and do a good job, man. Firstly, it was because I was doing so much jiu-jitsu. I just, I had a lot of time. I went to Brazil for six months to train, um, as well as the States. Um, and I basically, during that time, I was trying to think, I was training so much that I, um, basically thought, well, how can I do this for a living? <laughs> like, I want to do jiu-jitsu for a living. Uh, before that as well, so probably the last, to be honest, like my first six or seven years of jiu-jitsu was more of a hobby, and then the last six or seven has been uh, much more, almost like a full-time, serious sort of uh, thing, uh, especially preparing for EBI and so on, or ADCC <laughs> beforehand. But, uh, like, when I roll, it's... A lot of it's selfish, like it's about me, so who can I find that's going to give me the, the best challenge and push me for that event? Yeah. Whereas, I mean, the best thing for my students is probably try and roll with as many different people as possible uh, and get a feel of their game and what they're doing and what they're, what they're doing wrong. But I, to be honest, I probably don't get as much of that. <laughs> Right now, it's about 6 a.m. Shouldn't be up. So I'm not at the right now, I'm not trying to cut weight just yet, just trying to maintain my weight. I'm still lower than I normally would be because uh, I cut to bow, for BOA Super 8 um, down to 7, uh, I ended up about 68 kilos on the day of the weigh-in um, and I would normally weigh, if I just eat whatever I want I end up going up to about 78, 79 but at the moment I'm about 75 so I'd rather not go up and then have to do all that work again. So this is my breakfast pancake. Here's where the experiment goes. Interesting, because I bought spinach puree too. <laughs> to see if I could make them say everyone, and this failed big time yesterday. Now 
here's where it gets fun. Lower calorie versions of things that you'd like to eat. Fake peanut butter. Zero calories. Low calorie jam. It really doesn't taste that good, the peanut butter, but when you mix it with everything, a very small portion of what you'd normally eat, like you can fill yourself up. It's just that a couple of hours later, you're like, oh, I've actually got no energy. <laughs> I just, uh, everything that's in my stomach doesn't actually do anything. I like to try to cover all bases. I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's a good strategy or not. Maybe it is better to just be really good at one thing. Uh, I'm not advanced at wrestling, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I need like just, you know, like good just fundamental movements and sequences and, and so on, which I think having a one-on-one a -on -one coach is almost as essential for you. Just, I hate having a hole in my game. Like not a, well, it's, yeah, it's a hole in terms of like, I know if someone's got good wrestling, I know if I go in a competition, and my opponent's got good wrestling, I'll just avoid that game totally. I don't want to have to do that. I want to be like, okay, if they've got good wrestling, so do I. I'll, I want to be able to uh, take it to someone, no matter where I am, whether I'm on top, bottom, standing, wherever, I want to feel like, you know what, I can give them a good run. Obviously, I'll never be an amazing wrestler. I'm not doing it to you know, try and qualify for the Australian team or anything like that. I just want to, I'd love to get to a level where I could be competitive in Australia, where I could give someone a a hard break. Since I got the invite for Eddie Bravo, which is what, two months ago or so, uh, I really wanted to make sure my submission finishes not just not just points, but submission finishes were tight. And I'm actually starting to find some links between some different submissions. And What's a submission? <laughs> uh, a submission is, oh, in jiu-jitsu, like when you either get a joint lock, so like you're basically extending someone's arm or leg or some body part past, you're trying to extend it past its normal range, uh, and therefore you can cause, you're trying to basically cause an injury uh, and then your opponent it's up to them to tap out so to give up and, and submit um, but obviously you don't want to injure people but in a competition in training you, you try not to put it on so uh, but in a competition you put it on like you are and it's, it's up to your opponent how much uh, they're willing to let their joint extend uh, the other way and you, where you can submit is with a choke so you're basically cutting off the blood supply to the brain, uh, they'll either tap, or if they don't, they pass out. Um, <laughs> my current knee, yeah. Um, so I'm just elevating it at the moment. I've got like a, it's actually a really weird injury because I've never heard of it before. So I'm kind of making it up in terms of the ac exact diagnosis because I didn't know that there was a, a bursa around there, but it looks like a, it's like a fluid sac between, usually between uh, like a tendon and bone or, or between muscle and bone. But I don't know if you can see here, but there's a bit of swelling around the VMO attachment. It was quite swollen last night. Um, it's this muscle here. Ugh. Probably hard to tell now. It's annoying because it's not like, it doesn't mean there's any structural issue in the knee in terms of stability or anything. It's just like you train on it and it swells up more and then it gets sore and then yeah, I, kn I know if I just try and ignore it, it'll, it'll just get worse and then I'll have to miss more training. So I'm trying to get on top of it right now.
like uh, my main aim is that I can train properly, which means I think ideally I should actually have a decent sized breakfast and a decent sized lunch. So that like for training times I feel like I got energy and then probably kind of starve myself a bit overnight when I actually don't need it. You know, like last night, like I felt really low energy. Just like uh, before I'm training, like if I'm just sitting around, like to actually get up and do something seems like a massive effort. Like yeah, I think not yesterday, the day before I got in the, sitting in the car and I was like, it just seemed like a better idea to be sitting in the car. <laughs> um, if I'm not talking to someone, I just tend to stare into space, I think. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably get some shots of that. Waiting for my next match at the um, Melbourne International Open. Uh, I weighed in at 73.5, pretty much. So that's what I wanted to be for Nogi. Um, that's wearing this and this. So obviously, when I weigh in at EBI, I should be uh, like I would be five. I'd be half a kilo less probably without this Nogi stuff on. So I'd be about 73 now. I need to be 70.5 for. Eddie Bravo, so I've only got two and a half kilos to go. I could starve myself a bit more and dehydrate a tiny bit more, plus obviously just the actual uh, fat and, and muscle cut, which will, will happen for the next two weeks. Uh, like throughout the week, I've been really low energy. Like if I, as soon as I rest, I just don't want to get up, don't want to move. I get a bit more angry, uh, short with people, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's going to be funny because we've got to do gradings tomorrow. We'll have to assess where people are at and uh, I'll probably be hungry. So I would hate to be the person. It would be much nicer the, for the people who uh, get to catch me when I'm back after EBI when I'm actually eating. <laughs> With no grips. Has his um, EBI training just been changed the way he's rolling? Yeah, right absolutely. So he's definitely paying a lot less attention to points and a lot more focus on submission. I think it just makes you roll a little bit differently. Um, 
so his focus is like I mean the goal for this competition was to get enough points um, to qualify for world championships which he's done um, and this is just a bonus I mean of course you're always going for the win but I think when you're rolling with a different objective it's hard and he's doing good four minutes 30 you're three points down Yeah, so I'm just timing for him because this event has no timer um, for some reason. So I'm just yelling out the time and probably being really annoying and just going, go lucky, because it's very hard to do um, instructions. Someone who's a black belt and probably has much more knowledge of his own game than me. Don't know what, don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. <laughs> How is it? Uh, I'm much better at it now, but it's quite nerve-wracking. Um, probably nearly as nervous as I am for my own fights. But I just want him to do well and not get hurt. But at the same time, Locke is a pretty good winner and a pretty good loser. So sometimes I care about, not care, care is not the right word. You know, I, like, <laughs> I feel it more than he does when he loses or doesn't do as well. Like he gets over it and fixes his mistakes and then we're on to the next thing. So it's nice to have that to look forward to, look up to rather. I feel alright if I'm training, like using a lot of energy, but just like walking to here from the car. That's amazing. That was tiring? Yeah. I just like don't want to do it, I just want to lie down right now. Was it tiring? Nope. <laughs> The plan was to do pretty much a full week of training. I've done training camps before where I can usually train twice a day. Uh, I've never done a training camp while cutting this much weight though, um, and my energy levels were just uh, really poor. My last proper like rolling session, like hard training session was on Wednesday night, so two days ago, which gives me about four days rest for the competition. 
I was on weight this morning. I got two days to go. But I kind of want to get below a bit so I can eat a bit tomorrow and feel a bit more comfortable. So I'm going pretty hard at it today, trying to drop my weight a bit further so that then I can be really comfortable on the 24 hours leading into the weigh-in and actually hopefully uh, replenish some glycogen stores. And just, I think it's the diet, but my motivation's really low. Yeah. yeah, I don't have much drive. I think that'll come back when I eat. The jet lag, I'm still jet lagged. I'm still waking up at like four in the morning. It's been a week. I wake up at four in the morning for like half an hour or an hour, I go back to sleep. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, sometimes the hunger will wake me up too, I think. If you had asked me two, three weeks ago, I was feeling more confident than now. Uh, so I woke up, checked my weight. I was underweight. Um, Which is what again, sorry? So I have to be about 70.5 kilos. Uh, so I was 69.8. So I was like, awesome. My, and then so basically that means I can eat some food. For the fight, the easiest thing to do is rehydrate. I shaved my head. Um, I always like to do that. I feel just mental sort of thing, but I feel sharper when I do that. Um, and I also maybe look a little bit meaner. I look a bit younger too, so maybe it looks like I've got more energy than, than I actually do. about his competition recently while he's been away? Thinking about him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, yeah, wow. I don't know. Like, it's just normal. He's just away doing his... That's a joke. Have you talked to him? Yeah, yeah. Have you been talking to him? Yeah. Yeah. How has he been saying to you? Uh, well, he's just been listing what he's been eating. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of conversations, but yesterday he was fed a little bit, so he just had some, he was on weight and um, he was definitely like normal again, so he was just had a few Reese's pieces and was like, hi, I'm like, oh god, you're back. Um, and then, yeah, we just chatted very quickly this morning on Skype, um, and he's feeling good. I think if he's aggressive, he can do really well. But I mean, you go to an invitational competition where there's, you know, top 16 in the world of no gi guys, or maybe not top 16 in the world, but very good 16 guys, it's not going to be easy. You know, you're the underdog, like he's not ranked in the top four. Um, not many people know a lot of Australians, <laughs> yeah, so he's not seated in the top face. four, um, I like and I think the pressure is probably off him, but I reckon no, he can prove a lot of people wrong. To the floor. Yeah.
I'm going to keep the dog for the time that they're doing. Definitely working it. I failed that. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner by nine seconds with the Chris Dicks escape in overtime. Luckily. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
champion, Ben Rafael Dominguez. Five percent of the people said no. Uh, I got to think that Han Yaya and Nick is one of the reasons why people were doubting a repeat by Prokopos because this this field is just stacked. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, at 2 minutes and 42 seconds, we have our winner by way of armbar from Absolute MMA, Lachlan Kyle! Right leg over all the way to the outside. 
Like Yoko Sinkaku, Gary. Just a triangle when we turn. Kicking straight through, turning our hips down to the mat. When we're ready. Be patient here, Gary. We have a good position. Let's adjust our triangle, Gary. Let's make that tight. Let's cinch it in. Okay. position when we're on top here. Let's take our time and think it through. We have a little over five minutes left to work. Left knee's up high by your feet. Walking down, hanging top of Gary Tunnett. Whoops, the Gary. arms are separated. Gary knows he's got five minutes left. He's very patient. That's it. Wow. wow. That was amazing. We got a rush up. Slowly took away every, every decent to have. A bit anticlimactic there, but it was just a matter of time. Gary Tonin asserts his dominance over Lachlan Giles. Ends the night of the Aussie. Let's get the official time. Here's Jim Fitzgerald.
He's an EBI champion for good reason. We will see his dominance here on display. Right. So this is the most exciting part of the whole journey, the post weigh in uh, eating. So we've got Five Guys Burger, double grilled cheeseburger. We're gonna go to Ooey Gooey Fries. Um, so these are supposed to be really good fries with a whole bunch of stuff on top of them. Nutella pizza, looks pretty good. And then that night, we're gonna come back. This is a place open till 2 a.m. that does these hot dogs. It's supposed to be famous. They're supposed to be really good. So we're gonna have a hot dog. and then finish off with some donuts. I'm just, I'm just now writing a Big thank you post on Facebook to all uh, everyone who's helped me out in the lead up to this event um, and during the event as well. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of work that goes into it, uh, not just on my behalf, but on all my training partners and students, friends, family, everyone kind of has to uh, chip in. So I'm just trying to say thanks. Yeah, everyone's been very supportive. Everyone's uh, as a, uh, to me, watching that, I, mean, I think after my first match, I came out, as I said, I was pretty disappointed with how I fought, even though I won, but I think Troy had it up on his phone, showing everyone at home, watching it, cheering, mm -hmm. jumping up and down, and that was, that kind of brought out a few emotions in me, so, yeah. um, the rare raptor emotions. <laughs> 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 Not the most emotional person. No, that was good. Um, great to feel like I've at least given them something back for, for what they've put in, you know, uh, to put up with me going in, um, you know, putting all that prep in. They've obviously had to help out and put up with me through and, during the weight cut and uh, the grumpy versions of me and so on, so especially Liv. So. Yeah, it's good to have something to show for it. I actually woke up at 6 a.m. almost vomited because my stomach was so full. Like I felt like it's like the food had slowly started creeping back up to my stomach. So I um, decided to skip the waffles part, which they do look really good on that picture. So I'm somewhat regretting. Like right now, I'm like, oh, I could actually do it, but I know I'd have one bite, and then I'd be like, nah. So uh, we're gonna just go straight for the Philly cheese steak at some point. Your I can do that now. <laughs> oh, 35 kilos. <laughs> See, now Becca, I actually wouldn't make the lightweight division if I had a gear. We, got, we fly out at, uh, I think, 10 p.m., so we have to be at the airport at about 7, so then we finish off with the most gross, big, disgusting uh, burger we can find 
which is Hawkins House of Burgers. Definitely trained hard enough for this event. Um, you know, I put in a lot of time trying to study people's games and trying to find the right people to train with, uh, to deal with certain games. I think, uh, would I do it differently now? If I could go back, probably some things I'd do a little bit differently. Um, just knowing, you know, I suppose when I came here to, to train, I just noticed, yeah, and, you know, and probably in the week leading up, I noticed I had a bit of a, um, I wasn't so confident defending leg locks from the bottom when someone was on top of me, and I hadn't really practiced that. When I start, it's kind of funny though, because like when your energy's low, like the only thing, the only time my brain really does work is when I'm lying down doing nothing. Like I'm just on the computer, like when I'm not using any energy, my brain, my body can actually divert the blood flow to my brain. That's probably not very scientific, but that's what it feels like. I can actually think, whereas if I'm like, walking around and doing things, my ability to think and uh, is quite limited. Yeah, I want to show my, I guess my students that that international level of competition and, and so on is, is achievable. I mean, they, it's hard being from Australia where like we're kind of removed from, we don't get to compete against guys like I competed against yesterday, like on the regular, you almost never get to compete against those guys. Um, so you don't know, like you feel like you're putting in all this effort and doing all this work, but you don't know if you're actually uh, up there at that standard. Um, and like, so I think for me to be able to go into a competition and, you know, at least give some of the top guys a, a, a fight, like I, you know, I, I don't think I, I, I did really well in one of my matches obviously against Rani, but I mean, I mean, like just to show that, you know, like if you're in the gym and you're training with me and you're giving me a good time, I know that you are also going to be uh, able to go internationally and and start to push people too. So I think it's just good for people to have some sort of reference point to to um, make them feel more confident going to compete overseas. I know, I think I'll come back and in a week everything will be as it was. At first, everyone like, "Yay, yeah, well done!" <laughs> and then it'll be back to back to normal, and that's cool. That's how I like it. Yes.